All right, let's continue with the software part. So first, before we install Jack Trip, we want to install Jack. What is Jack? Jack is a sound server, a professional sound server that runs on your Mac, on your system. And it's basically just providing kind of real-time routing options. So you could, you know, it can access all of your different devices that are connected and route between them. This is not yet intended for, you know, the connection to the outside, which is then what JackTrip does. But how about we install it? So I'm going to go to jackaudio.org. And that's the website. You can go to downloads. And um, I'm not on Linux. I am on OS X right here. And I want to take the latest version, Jack 2, and I want a binary. A binary, let me click on that one. A binary essentially means an executable version of it. Okay, it downloaded. So I'm going to say show in Finder. I'm going to double click it, which will automatically uncompress it. You can see it's now a .pkg, which is an executable, an installer package that I can double click. However, it tells me cannot open because it's from an unidentified developer. What does that mean? So Apple and Mac generally have pretty high security standards. So this program seems to not officially have been you know, signed by Apple and kind of adapted into their store. So it's an unidentified developer, which means what we can do is we can right click on it and say open, which is the little workaround here. And then it asks, well, it cannot verify that this is you know, a safe program, but do you want to open it anyway? So you say open. And that was your little workaround to get to the installer menu. So what you're going to do, and I've already installed it, but you continue your way through this. You want to install it for all users on this computer. Um, why not? And uh, you would click install. After installing this software, Jack will probably ask you to restart your computer, which is what you should do before proceeding. So now that you have restarted your computer, you can go to your Applications folder and find a folder called Jack in there. Double-click on that and you will see all the installed files from Jack Audio. What you can do now is you can start QJackControl.app, um, which is the main navigation window of Jack. Um, note that you can also start Jack by using Jack Pilot, but because that is not properly working on Catalina, we can go with a QJack Control application because that works for all Mac platforms so far. Also, what's good to know is once you ran QJack Control from that folder, you can also access it by just hitting that little search uh, icon and just typing QJack Control because it's how we control the Jack you know, the Jack sound server that's running on our PC um, or computer. So I'm going to hit enter here after I typed in QJack control in that search bar, uh, bar. And now you can see this is literally the main window. You might see that a little connection window or a message window is popped up, but you can all, you, you can close them by hitting those buttons. And uh, this is really it. So what you can do is you could start the server, but before we do that, before we start the sound server on our uh, Mac, how about we go to setup and define some important things. This is what I want you to type into the server path because this is the correct folder that it looks for on your Mac. Slash USR, not user, USR, slash local, slash bin, slash jackd. So once we've set the server path, we just got to go here and select core audio because we're on a Mac and Mac uses core audio. As simple as that. Um, interface. Okay. Now... The next section you're facing here is interface. It currently says default for me, which I usually go with default simply because I already have it selected in my, in my sound settings that I'm using this interface. But if you wanted to make sure, you could click on that little arrow and say, you know, this is mine, for example, and click that one. Um, but what I did is usually I just click on this little sound icon here, or I could even type in sound. You can see system preferences sound, double click that. And uh, you have output and input here, right? So remember that your output is your US2X2 and your input is also the US2X2. So you want to select those two there. And then that's what, you know, also sets your default at interface. Or you choose it your, yourself manually, that's up to you. Now the next thing I want to take a look at is input and output channels. My interface has two input channels and two output channels. If it's as default for you, you could probably also leave it at default, but QJack control will never give you an explicit 
warning message saying, oh, you have selected three inputs while your audio interface only you know, supports two inputs. It will just crash and not work. So keep that in mind. All right, next I want to take a look with you at frames per period and sample rate. First of all, sample rate, what is that? The sample rate is usually set to 48,000 or another standard is 44,100 samples per second, which is essentially how often does my audio interface save the state of my microphone, what it's recording, the, the state of the diaphragm, where is it? Um, I like to go with 48,000 simply because it, it's a standard. Um, so maybe type that in here. And um, frames per period is what it's called, what is called the buffer size as well. So think of what you're sending out to your friends or your music partners um, in packets. The packet that's currently selected is 1,024 samples long. So when we do audio with Jack and Jack Trip, we want to have as low of a packet as possible because essentially this number 1024 says we're collecting 1024 samples which takes a little while and only once those are complete we'll send that packet out to the other side to our fellow musicians and um it has some advantages because you know let's say our internet connection is not as stable you know um or we need some processing power on our machine then a higher buffer size is good because we can deal with that on our machine and only once it's all done, send it out. You know, the longer, the, the safer it is, but also the higher the latency will be. So what we're going to try to do is slowly, you know, diminish our frames per period. We try to get a lower buffer size, um, the lowest buffer size as possible. So how about we start at 1024 and um, it'll be more intuitive later on in the video but essentially this means dear jack when you process my audio with your sound server um, start by thinking in chunks of 1024 samples and when you send stuff over to some some other server later just send packets of 1024 samples um, so that way we can see if that works and once that works we can try to make that number lower and go to 512 or 256 um, and see if that still works with the connection if our internet is stable enough to send those uh, shorter packages so that the latency the overall time we have to wait to send them out is less so that it arrives earlier okay so now we have finished all of what we had to set in our qj control settings window and i'm going to hit okay by the way before i do that you can see the latency here you can see that it calculates you know depending on what sample rate we have and the frames per period the buffer size we set how long that will take for this packet to be collected and then sent out so if i were to lower the buffer size by factor two I would also divide this, the latency by factor two. So if I were to send a packet that's only 512 samples long, you can see, oh, now the latency has also dropped to 32 milliseconds, which means it's less of getting those buffer samples together and putting them out there because we only need to wait half the time and not for the whole 1024 samples. Um, okay, so I'm gonna set it back to 1024 and I'm gonna hit okay. So here we are now back in our QJack control window and uh, we've taken a look at the settings. One important thing when using QJack control is that you always have to stop the server and then make the settings and then restart the server because you can't just change the settings on a running server. Um, before we start the server, I want to show you the connect window. Currently, we haven't even started the server, right? So there's literally nothing to connect. So I'll leave that connections window open and click start. And what you will see is it says starting here. And in fact, it did start the server. So it says RT here that is blinking, which stands for real time. And also you can see this little percentage bar that is DSP load, you know, how, how many resources uh, does, it, does it take on my machine? So that's pretty low and it's uh, changing constantly. That's, that's a good sign. Um, so we have started our sound server on the PC. Now, if that worked for you, you will see that in your connections window that is still open, you have a system on the left and the right. And I'm going to click this little extend button to actually see what's, you know, be behind that system option there. And you can see, remember how I selected two inputs and two outputs in the setup window because that's what my interface has. 
This is literally the two microphone inputs and the two outputs for headphones or the studio monitors. So what I can do is I can actually now put on my headphones and say, cool, I want to connect because I'm not hearing anything yet, right? I'm now going to connect my microphone, which indeed is Capture One, right? It's in the input one of my audio interface and connect it to System Playback One, which System Playback One is my left channel and System Playback Two is my system's right channel. So if I connect it by hitting the connect button here to Playback One, I am now able to hear myself on my left side of my headphones. And you can do the same thing and verify that if, if that works. So I'm also going to connect my microphone, which is input one, right? I'm also going to connect it to playback two, which is my right side. So once I just hit that button, I am now hearing myself on both parts, on both sides of the headphones. Um, verify that if that works for you. And also verify that when hitting disconnect all, I am sure, yes, that it now is gone. And indeed, I cannot hear myself anymore. Um, that, by the way, would make you hear yourself with a little bit of delay. So actually this 1024 number that we had, this buffer size, is now actually taken and it's waiting for that buffer size to reach your audio interface. And then once it's there, it then outputs it to you. So it's not really in real time. You, you would hear a very, very slight delay. Um, so that's a good thing for now. Um, okay, if you have clicked start earlier and nothing worked and it did not say real time and was blinking, then you should have a look in your messages window. So let me open the messages window. And this is interesting in general. You can see that it executed a bunch of commands in the background, um, none of which is very interesting for us. So in this line, you can see it started our uh, server with the right sample rate, 48,000 and 1,024 buffer size. So it did all those things in the background, actually kind of executing it in a terminal-like environment here. But we don't need to worry about it if it works. If it did not work, you will see most probably an error message somewhere in here. And um, it's probably nice enough to color that error message red for you. So for example, if it said, you know, let, let me do an example where I stop the server again. And I would select, how about we uh, up it to a very, very high number? How about 30 inputs? I only have two inputs on my audio interface, right? So if I hit start now, could not connect to Jack's server as client. So it wasn't able to start the server. And um, when we hit cancel, uh, we can see it's not blinking. So it indeed didn't start it. And there is a red error message here. See? Oh, I think it might still be trying because I just got this new pop-up here. But um, could not connect to Jack server as client. Overall operation failed. See, it doesn't give me very precise details on why it failed. So keep that in mind with QJack control. Go in your settings, uh, your setup window if something is not right and just try to see if you got everything the right way. Um, then hit start and hopefully eventually it'll work for you. So that's just a little debugging tool. For now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to setup and say again input channel only two, which is what worked, hitting the start button, and now it should be started. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my connect window, just verify that I see the system options here. Fantastic. And now you should be set up if that worked for you. In the next step, I want to show you how to install Jack Trip. And with Jack Trip, just as already a little pre note, you will eventually not only see system on the left and the right, right, which is your audio, you will also find a new one that says Jack Trip, which is going to be your connection to the outside world. So then you can say, okay, now I want to connect my microphone, not only maybe to myself connecting it so that I can hear myself, but I also want to connect it to this new menu, which is Jack Trip, to send it out to somebody else. But um, I'll see you in the next video.